Hello everyone, it's Tyler Ryden here. Uh, talking today, I wanted to talk about, uh, I guess sort of meta is uh, the rise of podcasting, then the rise of audiobooks as well too. And this is something that has fascinated fascinated me a lot. Uh, as someone who was uh, actually somewhat critical of audio, especially audiobooks uh, at a time. I remember a lot of people telling me that they were reading books and then, you know, sort of relaying the information later that it was actually they were listening to uh, the book. So they were listening to an audio book. And I always thought that doesn't quite it qu- doesn't quite feel like it's the same thing as reading the the you know, it, you're not dedicating the same energy and focus to it. And I was I, I was sort of critical about it. I I thought, you're not really learning. I had listened to some podcasts in the past and I'd listened to even, I think, tried to listen to some audio books. And I was like, man, you're not, I'm not really listening to this. I'm doing a bunch of other stuff at the exact same time. And I don't think I'm quite gathering the information uh, in that same way. I, since, um, have... Uh, you know, I'm not retaking that stance. I still believe there uh, there is uh, a gap in the way that you're comprehending when you're reading, and this is this is obvious. That there's a, a difference between the comprehension when reading a physical book and staring at it, and that's the only thing you're doing, compared to um, podcasting or audiobooks where you are, you know, you're at the gym. Uh, a lot of people listening, obviously driving, and then even at home through smart speakers and stuff, and so. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today. I have a couple stats uh, as well too that I was just looking at, and you know, just just a couple of things that I wanted to listen to here to give some context. And, and this one uh, says here: 112 million uh, Americans have listened to a podcast, uh, up 11 percent in one year. Uh, and some of these are from 2016, some of these are from 2017. So it's just expanding. Uh, 67 million Americans listen to a podcast monthly, and just for you know, just for the, the, the side of it, that's more common than uh, Catholicism. So that's that's pretty crazy. Uh, we're looking at, you know, almost 50 million Americans. And I don't know why I'm just saying American. It just seems like that's where the, that's where the stats uh, are coming from. We're listening to podcasts weekly. And I've, I've noticed this, and this is obviously anecdotal, uh, anecdotal but uh, a ton of my friends who I, I don't really think listen to podcasts in the past or listen to even audio books are now really really deep into it and instead of you know instead of what I find really interesting and it still continues is you know asking what what are you watching right now what's on Netflix that you're watching or what's on TV that you're watching the discussions that I'm having with some of my friends and uh, it does seem to lean a little bit towards guys which I'm not quite sure why it seems to be younger male um, adults who are listening I asked them what they're what they're what they're listening to, or what podcast do you recommend, or uh, did you listen to uh, the latest J- Joe Rogan? Obviously, is is one of the the big podcasts um, that a ton of people listen to, and uh, that's that's a really interesting shift. And I think what's what's amazing about it is how much bonding comes from it. So uh, if I have a buddy who listens to Joe Rogan, I can have I can have a fourth hour conversation with him talking about the guests that he's had and just the nuances and the intricacies of that conversation. And my question is that I'm not really answering today. I'm just sort of thinking about it uh, out loud. It's just why have these, why have podcasts become so popular? Why have audiobooks become so popular? And of course, there's a part of that with the distribution. Um, We're in much more democratized system in terms of content production and access to technology. So before it was harder to uh, get access to a good microphone or a lot of people were doing video podcasts, um, you know, actual cameras and setting up that system and not just setting up the technical side, but also setting up the distribution side. So, um, of course, before there was, you know, there wasn't an iTunes, there wasn't a podcast uh, place to go. Um, and and when iTunes brought that in and when podcasting became it, it, it set up this distribution center and and. I've talked about this a little bit in the past is I thought it was actually, I was pretty intimidated about how figuring out how to get my podcast up and and doing it in a scalable, efficient way. Now that I've set that up with, um, with a plugin through WordPress, all I really have to do is a blog post and it's automatically updating, not just to iTunes, but I've now seen it on Google podcasts. Uh, and, uh, it's disseminating basically automatically, which is really cool. Note that I do think is, is quite interesting is that, um, 
Google has kept the term like podcast. It, it's it's so interesting because it seems like it was something that was started like basically exclusively by iTunes, but is now uh, taken over a lot of mediums. Uh, and what I find it really interesting is Google has kept that name. It's still podcasting. This is what it is known about uh, known for, and this is what it's known by. And so I just thought that was interesting that even Google uh, sort of was taking an iTunes branding of of what this is and actually keeping that for their own application as well too. A couple other things I'm really just pulling, pulled up a couple articles and uh, this is a lot, you know, this is really my process for a lot of things. Something I'm interested in, do a couple variations of a search and then pull the top 10 Google, result, Google results and find the ones that are good. And so I just have a couple stats listed if you see me looking over here. I just wanted to, you know, give a couple things that uh, give me a little bit more context and give you a little bit of context, just how popular this is. So uh, the average listener subscribes to six podcasts. Um, podcast fans listen to five shows per week. Uh, and then just, this is a little bit different, but 52% of podcasts are listened to at home and uh, 18% in the car. Now I've seen some, uh, I've seen some uh, different stats across the things. You never know exactly how accurate it is, but uh, you know, for example, Fast Company, April 2018 said there's over 525,000 active shows and over 18.5 million episodes uh, in terms of podcasts. And so that's a phenomenal amount. Uh, I don't know. What I'm really interested in is, are we getting are we getting saturated in podcasting, or, or will we get saturated in podcasting? And what is so interesting about it is because it's such a small little thing for so many people to set up, that there seems like there's the possibility for a lot of strong niches to 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 grow. And so just because there's so many podcasts already, 525,000 active shows. It doesn't necessarily take away um, from the audience of c certain podcasts. So just because you're doing, um, you know, some people are doing podcasts on, you know, history of Russia in, you know, in the Soviet Union and the whole geographical area, um, you know, from 1000 BC, you know, like on, you know what I mean? They're so small, like just these ridiculous tiny niches that only certain people are interested in. And it really makes for a destination that, that people can find and really find their own path and what they're interested in. And I think that's been a, a big part of the success of podcasting. Uh, but it, 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 you wonder, right? Does it follow that? Uh, does it follow that? trend you know that it seems to happen to all platforms it it comes out everyone sort of flocks about it creates content the people in the beginning really seem to thrive and then it becomes too late it gets oversaturated and the other people sort of struggle with the success uh that the earlier adopters actually get um uh, now just pulling up a couple other things here i just thought you know uh, where was this article here? This was a good one, and uh, I'm not actually pulling it up on the screen here today, but this is uh, by Medium, and the actual uh, article is called The Rise of the Podcast and Why You Should Start One. I guess I'll pull it up here just so we can see for anyone who's watching this on video. Rise of Podcast and Why You Should Start One. Everyone tells everyone that you should be starting a podcast. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I think some people that's very useful. Other people it's not. One thing I did want to note is that one of the really interesting sides of podcasting, not interesting, but effective and powerful parts of podcasting is that obviously you're attacking different mediums. You can do audio, you can do video, uh, but the side that I see is this transcription side. So we actually have the ability to now with um, Google, with Amazon, with IBM, uh, basically upload audio files and transcribe those quite accurately. So 85 to you know 95% accuracy. And so if I do a podcast and I did one the other day, about an hour and a half, by the end of that hour and a half, I've racked up 14,000 words in content. I upload that audio file, it transcribes it. And I now have, you know, 14,000 words of original content with, you know, 
tons of keywords, tons of relevant context and information for Google and search engines to uh, actually index and crawl and then help promote. And so not only am I, you know, not only is podcasting great for the relationship it creates by people listening, but it also creates, if using transcription, um, the ability to help increase your organic rankings online and, and, and find a way for people to find you for really no additional cost, which uh, for a marketer, for anyone, that's that's obviously a goal that a lot of people uh, are trying to get to. Uh, it's just a couple of, again, st- statistics. 60% of the U.S. population is familiar with the term podcasting. 50% of all U.S. homes are podcast fans. Uh, 40% yeah, have listened to a podcast up 36. You see, some of these are different numbers here. I don't know. But, you know, saying up 36, 36% uh, in 2016. So a uh, ton of ton of crazy stats and growth around it. Uh, a lot of this, they believe, has been obviously... Um, has been contributed or contributed by these, you know, big companies, Google, obviously, um, Apple, who has been a big piece of this. And just, um, you know, now we're seeing Amazon, uh, with audible, uh, which is a fantastic, fantastic company, um, actually getting much more into the audio side as well too. And so, you know, here, why, why should you start a podcast? It's mobile, you know, it's, it's just so nice, like in terms of, the the attention that you have to dedicate it to but still get the value out of it and still allowing you to do everything else and i think you know in this time that we're in we are we are crunched for time everyone is sort of uh you know pretty damn busy we're doing something and if we're not that busy it's it still seems to be a, a pretty high highly important choice of where you want to dedicate your time and so to have a podcast have an audio book, I'm able to work out, I'm able to uh, listen, it, listen to it if I'm doing more data entry, if I'm driving a car a long distance, it really creates that beautiful relationship with, uh, with audio of, I can listen to this, enjoy it, get great valuable information, and I can also still be doing the other parts of my life and doing a good job at it. And so of course that has been, I think, part of the success of, of podcasting. We don't have the time to dedicate, it's tough to watch, you know, if anyone's watching this video, I'm at 12 minutes already and you like if you're watching this and you're focused on that damn that's that's a lot of concentration that's a lot of focus and that's dedication to time i don't ask my friends to really watch these videos i don't ask anyone to watch these videos because i know how much you know 15 20 minutes uh, can be worth to someone but for you to be able to disseminate it to itunes disseminate it to google podcasts for them to be able to listen to it on a leisurely day when they're doing something or when they're doing an activity that's not that uh you know demanding in terms of mental power there you go you can listen to it, it doesn't disrupt your day and you can get some great uh information and just a, an, an experience and and part of that i thought it was in in this article that i have pulled up i think i'm going to go back to uh full screen tyler here um Part of it is just the intimate relationship. Like when I am listening to a podcast or when I'm listening to an audiobook, especially if you're an audiobook, if you're creating an audiobook, narrate your own book. Read it. Like, like I've listened to uh, a bunch of books lately that have been narrated by the authors, and it is such a beautiful experience. It's the most intimate way to listen to someone. You feel like you learn so much. The the tone and the passion in their voice uh, is just amazing. And and that's what it is. Like when I'm listening to a podcast, when I'm listening to this audiobook, it's just so intimate, uh, and you feel like you're you're learning so much, uh, and and building a relationship with people. And I think uh, there's a lot of respect and admiration for people who are doing podcasts, and just a, a really close connection that's built by both the podcaster and the listener, which is uh, is really exciting for for both parties. I think in a in a time where we see so much artificial stuff, see so much. Um, you know, very flaunty, flashy uh, stuff on social media and online. It's nice to have these intimate conversations. And uh, I think that, that that seems to be a piece of the success here is obviously the intimacy and then, then the long form of being able to turn something on, listen to an hour podcast, listen to a three-hour podcast with no real disruption to be pretty engaged in it. Uh, that's that's just a fantastic thing that that really... But really, you know, you you expect the growth of it, and uh, just in that own right, like language, speech, communication, audio, that is where people 
came from. That is how our civilization started. The reason why we grew, the reason why we um, are still here today is because of because of voice, because of language, because of audio. And so to, to continue that trend in a way that can be, um, you know, distributed across the world and, and very quickly uh, and being able to share knowledge and being able to, uh, you know, listen and, and give and take. And a lot of shows are now doing, you know, question and answers. Like it's such a, such an amazing thing that is really, I think, putting us on a Putting us on a path to uh, to a better world where we're all we're all learning and having conversations that that are great and those you know those conversations on the podcast then then lead to conversations in the real world and it just creates this amazing feedback loop of what seems to be like you know there are a ton of I'm just looking this up here as well too obviously there's a ton of comedy um, you know podcasts and stuff and but even like the comedy ones there seems to be so much value that you can get out of it and uh, I've I've really, really enjoyed again like even something like Joe Rogan where it is it is comedy it's more comedy based but the when you put someone in a long form conversation. Even the comedy, the part or the characters that we often see in like six minute little TV appearances, they fall apart and the real authentic person comes out in that long form conversation. And so some of the greatest lessons as things I've learned and seen have become from, you know, people that you wouldn't be that think would be that serious. Some, you know, Chris D'Elia or Theo Vaughn or, you know, people like this who are just straight up comedians, but who in their real world are actual people and they're not always just making jokes every day they have real parts of their personality that they want to show um, or at least that do get shown in these long form conversations so i uh just something like just something i want to touch on i didn't want to be get too redundant or go over too much here i just seeing if there was anything else but um, it doesn't really you know, I don't think I can do it justice. I'd love to do some more research and come back on a different, on a different, uh, different time and actually talk a little bit more of this because I think there's so much more that can be looked at on a on a granular level of why it's succeeding, of of who is succeeding and and where those trends are going. And so I do plan to do that, but I did want to record a, a little video here uh, today. Now, one thing that I just wanted to share. And I'm not fully done this, but uh, I have my, let's check this out. I do it right. There we go. This is my site, TylerBryden.com. And I've been listing, listing my, you know, my, obviously my podcasts on here and obviously creating a, you know, a ton of content really around, you know, obviously the stuff that I'm talking about in these podcasts and, and really enjoying life. But this is one of the things that I, I've, I started to wanted to share uh, and really does fit in with the theme today of obviously audio books and audio and so what I've been trying to do is compile a list of some of the, the just the absolute best books that I've listened to uh, on Audible. And uh, I really do, like I do a ton of research before I even pick a, bo a book because as I said, it is to me, you know, time is a very valuable thing. And uh, I really do try to make a, a very conscious choice of where I spend that time. And so uh, these books have come out of like, you know, hours <laughs> of research before I even picked, picked the book, which might sound crazy, but the books that I've chosen and the ones that I've obviously listed here are absolutely fantastic. And so uh, this is on my site, my Audible library, great audiobooks for everyone. I'm going to continue to add to this and I might make it even like a little bit easier to digest. Uh, the part that I want to add, and some, look, some of these books are amazing, man. Steve Martin, Born Standing Up to Here. And like a lot of these are narrated right by the authors, as I mentioned. Trevor Noah, uh, which was an amazing book. Some of the greatest insights. Conversion Code, if you're into the marking. Some Kevin Hart. I really, obviously, you can see that I love going for the authors who are narrating their own books because it's just so personal. And uh, another thing that I just tried to highlight here was that the, there are these courses on Audible called The Great Courses. And they are like, man, like, I know that one is only 12 hours long, but you can see this critical business skills for success, 31 hours and 23 minutes. That's a, that's a goddamn, that's a whole course in one book. And the amount of stuff that I've learned from some of those great courses is honestly mind blowing to me. So I did want to start to share some of those. I am going to continue to add to this. And uh, what I'm trying to set up here 
is you can get a free trial. I'm going to have a link to, I believe I can make this work, a link to a free trial uh, for Audible. So if you haven't set up, if you haven't used Audible in the past uh, and are looking at getting into podcasting or you know you want to listen to some audio or podcasting or now obviously audio books, um, take the free trial. You get a free book, listen to it. I'm going to have a link to that free uh, trial. And I think I even get a little credit or something there as well too. So a little bit of affiliate link. Uh, I'm going to do some more of that stuff in the future, but obviously really trying to promote natural stuff that that I really care about and can recommend and and confidently recommend. So uh, again, part of part of my journey is is trying to overcome obstacles that uh, a lot of us are, are going through and trying to find these good pieces of valuable information that can help you get through those obstacles or, um, you know, and just share stuff of value that that I think, you know, has helped me and, and hopefully can help others. And so whether that's my Audible book, uh, Audible books that I'm recommending and a, and a free trial that I'm trying to send your way or even... Uh, you know, some of what I'm trying to do is review some of the amazing, you know, the amazing software that I get to use in my day to day business with digital marketing, things like that. Uh, I am really hoping to share with you and all through this fantastic medium uh, of podcasting uh, of through audio. And one day I hope to do my own book and actually have uh, have a narrated version of that as well, too. That is a far way away. But uh, with every single podcast I do, uh, I continue to try to get better and I, you know, I take the transcriptions of those and, and rework them and take the concepts and I do hope to build something pretty exciting at one point in my life. So uh, I think if I pull this up here, back to me, I think I am done for the day. Uh, I will see you again uh, next week for another podcast, another little video. Hope you enjoyed this. If you're listening to podcasts, man, let me know. Let me know. Shoot me some of the ones that you're listening to. I'd love to know what other people are listening to. If you've got any good recommendations, and the same thing for uh, same thing for Audible, same thing for um, you know for for audiobooks that that you've you know that you've listened to that have maybe changed your life for the better. Uh, I'm always looking for some more, and I think I've got some credits built up on the account there. So I'm done for the day. I hope you guys have a, a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.